Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? Thank you guys for tuning in to watch this video. This is part two of a product highlight series, a mini series that I'm doing in preparation for T-Mobile's, you know, low band 5G deployment. Their big launch date being December 6th. They're going to have a couple of devices that are going to be up and for sale. You can buy them online or you could buy them in the store, but becoming available here in just about a week or so. It's probably important that you make sure that if you're considering these devices, you know everything about them. So the other day with the other video in the first part, we took a, a look at the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G McLaren edition, which is going to be a limited edition device that is going to be part of this deployment and the initial launch of the low band 5G from T-Mobile. We did a, a product kind of spotlight on it. I'll put a link in the description box. I also put a card up here in the right hand side of the video and also put an end card for it as well if you wait till the end of the video. Anyways, all the details for that device that we do know are there. A little bit of, you know, kind of some, I don't know if I want to say skepticism about the specs on that phone, but I do have some reservations that are probably going to have to wait until the phone becomes available and people get the devices in their hands. But here is information we definitely do know the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G will also be available at the time of T-Mobile's grand scale launch of their low band 600 megahertz 5G spectrum. Uh, they're going to be highlighting this device as well. So let's go through kind of this product spotlight and see if maybe this device is a better option for you over say for example the oneplus 7t pro 5g mclaren edition so the samsung galaxy note 10 plus 5g both of these devices in fact are going to be low band 5g compatible as well as mid band so they are both going to be merger ready so merger goes through we're going to be seeing 2.5 gigahertz being deployed in the mid band for t-mobile They'll be utilizing both uh, of those types of spectrum. So anyways, uh, specifications for this phone. Display size coming in at 6.8 inches. It is going to be a quad HD display. It's going to have, uh, I, th I want to say it's, I think it's three cameras on the back. Uh, and then it's got the the one selfie camera there. And you could see kind of that, that little cutout in the middle there. Uh, kind of a unique way of of doing the selfie camera. Uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, it is going to be the same chip that we see in the McLaren Edition 5G device from OnePlus. Uh, you'll see the storage option. It is coming with 256 gigs of storage, and then it also is expandable with a micro SD card. And battery size, this is something that's different than the OnePlus. This phone has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, which is a little bit over 200 milliamp hours larger than the OnePlus is. So obviously, especially in the early onset, with devices not really being out for a while and the experience with the 5G technologies being there, you know, battery technology is, is we're going to be at the mercy of how big our batteries are in these 5G devices. In my opinion, this may be the single biggest factor. If these devices are indeed the same price or very, very close, this is the one to get if battery capacity appears to be a concern with 5G networks. The handoff to and from LTE and 5G, consistently searching for a 5G signal. The bigger the battery, the more likely your experience is to be a little bit more tolerable. Because what could happen with smaller batteries is these devices could suffer from poor battery life. Something tells me they're not going to make it through the day, regardless whether you get this one or the OnePlus. But obviously, having a little bit of a larger battery, definitely a pro or a plus there. So... Uh, some other specifications, uh, you guys see there, it will be an AMOLED panel. In my opinion, I think Samsung does the best displays. You have a screen-to-body ratio of almost 91%. Very, very impressive there. Uh, HDR video, Corning Gorilla Glass, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. I don't think we're going to be seeing the Exynos variant of the chip. That's probably going to be the international model. So expect the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 here stateside. Um... It's probably going to be running Android 10 at the time. I'm, I'm sure it probably will see an update. Uh, here you can see, um, you know, not a user-replaceable battery. You'll see it does Qualcomm fast charging, uh, Qi fast charging as well, the wireless charging. It also does reverse wireless charging, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, those are, all, you know, some nice features. The OnePlus also does warp charge, which is really, really fast. Uh, probably the fastest that I've ever experienced. Uh, there's some other 
information on the megapixels and whatnot of the cameras, time of flight sensor, all that good stuff. Anyways, uh, you can kind of scroll down here. We'll see it as water resistant. That's probably something that the McLaren Edition OnePlus doesn't have. Uh, it's got a built-in integrated S Pen or stylus pen. You know, there's a lot to like about this device. Uh, based on this, these features and stuff, I can clearly say that this phone will be more capable than a OnePlus. Uh, here you can see the 5G connectivity. You'll see it does mention millimeter wave. That would be the Verizon model, one being sold with millimeter wave. The one that uh, T-Mobile will be selling will be uh, the standalone and non-standalone variant with sub-6 gigahertz compatibility and also with low band. Will not be millimeter wave compatible. Anyways, here are the LTE bands. You'll see two. You'll see four. Uh, you'll also see um, five mentioned there as well. Uh, if you were going to use this on, say, AT&T, uh, you'll also see a mention of 12, 13. So 12 being AT&T and T-Mobile, 13 being Verizon. Uh, I think also you'll see mention of band 26. Uh, it should have 25 and and 41 as well for um, for Sprint. You can see that down there uh, for the TDD side. So, uh, and then you all see band 46 and 48, so that feature proofs you there with LTE. And um, so you got all your LTE there. It's a Category 20 device, super, super fast. It's going to be awesome. It's also going to be compatible with DSS, dynamic spectrum sharing, because of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855. And you will see no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, same thing with the OnePlus. You won't have it there. Uh, but it does have Dolby Atmos sound and 32-bit DAC and all that good stuff. A little bit more about the connections. You'll see Type-C. You know, all that good stuff, the charging, uh, Bluetooth 5.0, and MSR, MSRP price of $1,300. Other than that, I think there is a 512 gig storage option, which does increase the price at $100, bucks, but there is expandable storage. So if you want to use a micro SD, uh, you'll see where it says up and coming. That's going to tell you who's going to be selling it here shortly in the next couple of weeks. It's been a Verizon exclusive, and that's been millimeter wave only. Now, in my opinion, this device coming in at thirteen hundred, right? And the other one coming in, I don't. We don't really know for sure. You know, some people are being wishful thinkers and hoping it comes in under a thousand. I doubt it. It's going to be a McLaren edition. It's going to be limited. Um, in my opinion, I'm leaning this way. I'll I'll kind of do a comparison video on that and let you know where I'm leaning towards. And then once the phones drop and we get the final specifications, we can kind of draw the conclusion. But in my opinion, if they're going to be priced similarly, and this one's got the larger battery and Samsung, you know, with all those features and the S Pen and all the reverse wireless charging, all that good stuff, there's a ton to like here. What say you guys on this device? And, um, you know, if you're considering it, maybe it's the one that you're going to get if you're going to do a 5G device from T-Mobile or, uh, you know, maybe it's just too rich for your blood or maybe you're just not into it right now and you're kind of waiting. Um, anything that you guys want to discuss, go ahead and include that in a comment down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this device and all the elements of its specifications. So uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you could, please like and share the video. Maybe you could share it to your favorite social media platforms. And that would be great. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to check out some of the other SMT communities, we got the Discord server. We got the Patreon page. Uh, those links are in the description box below. There's a PayPal share link if you want to make a donation. Many thanks in advance for those considerations. Also got the Twitter handle, at Sneed Tech. Check me out there. And uh, that's pretty much it for this one. And, um, and again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, tons of news going on. Lots of wireless network stuff. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you never miss an upload from the SMT. That's it. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I am the SMT, and I will see you guys on the next video.